Right, so rig for rescue systems. At level one, you are going to be required to have an understanding of rig for rescue systems. You will need to demonstrate lowering a casualty using a rig for rescue system, and you need an awareness of hauling system. What usually happens in, in, uh, on, in training and assessments is you will learn how to set up a hauling system and you will be asked to do it on assessment day. If you couldn't assemble a pulley system and do the lifting portion of the exercise alone, you would be allowed some help given that it's only an awareness exercise. Now, in this case, we have access to the anchor point at the top, so we've rigged the ropes directly through two descenders here. If you didn't have access to an anchor at the top, you could direct the ropes up through a couple of pulleys, take the ropes back down to the floor or another platform where you do have access. Now, given that the casualty is already on the floor, I'm going to go through the lifting aspect of this exercise first. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is identify which one of these lines is a working line and which one is a backup line. Now, in this case, I can see and feel that this one is the working line. The casualty's weight is on it, I can see the descent and devices attached to this, and the other line is slack with the back attached. It's always worth a visual as well as a feel, just in case he is hanging on his back device and his working line is slack for some reason. Now, the first thing we're going to do is apply a fairly simple pulley system to this working rope. Now, for that, we're going to need a few extra bits of gear. It's a good idea to keep these handy around the, around the rig for rescue system. If there is ever a possibility, you need to lift somebody up. Now, the first thing I'm going to use is a shunt or any kind of rope grab, like a jammer or a crawl or uh, a duck. Anything that will grab this working line for you. Now, rather than its normal orientation, that's going to go upside down because we're going to be pulling up on this rope. So I'm going to take that, pop it on the working line, the cam spring through, and we're going to take a pulley. We're just creating a simple three to one system here by connecting this pulley to the shunt. If I slide that down, I'm able to start pulling up on this rope now. Having said that, it's not a very efficient way to, to, to use your, your body weight. You're relying almost entirely on strength in this orientation. So all I'm going to do is use one more pulley. Just to change the direction that that tail is travelling in. We still have a 3 to one here. It's just a little bit more efficient to use. We can get some body weight behind it now. The first thing I'm going to do before I start lifting is check that the casualty's back up is in a high position. I'm probably going to have to manage that for him. If he's not able to get himself up the ropes, there's a good chance he's not able to manage his back up either. So, that's already in a high position. There's no slack in that line. I'm going to start the lift. I'm going to have to unlock this descender. I'm going to pull down on that tail end. Now that wasn't too bad. It moved a little bit. The back is still in a fairly high position, so I'm going to go again. Anytime I'm not controlling this rope, I'm going to lock that descender hand lock. He's back which is about level with his descender there. Coming close to four factor one. So I'm going to unlock the, the descender for the back of the line, pull the slack through, lock it back off. And we'll just keep repeating that. Ideally at work, if you haven't operated a system like this, there'll be two people. One person could continuously manage that back of the line. And once the pulleys and the rope grab get jammed against the descender at the top, just lock that descender off. Two pulls. I'm going to pull back to tight. Now if that was more than 70 kilos on the end of there, or I was doing this for, for I had a quite a long way to lift this, this load, another way you could do it and make it a little bit more efficient would be to attach your harness, with a crawl on your harness, to this tail end. Just support your weight on a handrail or something around you with one hand and hold the rope under the crawl with the other hand. And just let yourself drop down to the platform, just utilising your weight as much as you can. Again, stopping a couple of pulls, keep that back nice and high. And just continue like that until the casual is either at the top or wherever he needs to be to reach a safe place. And that's it for the lifting part. I'm going to strip this away now and get ready for lowering now. So now we're looking at lowering a casualty or a load using a rig for rescue system. Now this portion of the exercise level ones are assessed on, on assessments. It is fairly straightforward, you just have to make sure you're keeping careful control of the tail ropes and you're adding an extra friction carabiner to the working line descender before you lower down. Now that's necessary in this case because the descender is inverted, it's flipped upside down. So that tail rope isn't going across the lip of the descender as it normally would. 
So in the user instructions for this device, the manufacturer demonstrates using a friction carabiner. Clip the bolt with the tail running through on the working rope anytime the device is upside down. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to just have a check, make sure the path to the ground or the safe place is clear for the casualty. Take control of both tail ropes together, pull both hands on the ground, push them both up towards the ends. Just keep an eye on the load as you're lowering it down. Just take your time, maintain control on both tail ropes until the load reaches the floor or the safe place. Remove the friction carabiner. If you have used any equipment for lifting or lowering, just try and make sure it stays anchored next to the rescue system for whoever else might need to use it.